Hey class, I know we like to do silly voice for morning greeting and I feel like I haven't done one for a while, so here's my greeting to you in my silly voice. Good morning, second graders. Sean, you want to do one too? Morning, y'all. How y'all doing this morning? Y'all! <laughs> okay, back for another chapter of Wayside. Now, like last time, I said there was another chapter 19. Yet again, there's another... Hey, Moose. There's another... Okay, I see you. You want to say hi to the second graders, too? There's another chapter 19. Forever is never. Moose is here listening to the story. Hey, Boo. You want to sit down? Okay. You're a good boy. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Allison was still stuck on the 19th story. 14 two-minute breaks had passed. It's dictionary time, said Miss Zarvez. Everybody got out a dictionary. Allison found a dictionary in her desk, too. What are we supposed to do with it, she asked. Memorize it, said Nick. Memorize it? That's impossible, said Allison. No, it's easy, Virginia assured her. You memorize one word at a time until you, until you get a whole page. Then you go on to the next page. How many words have you memorized, asked Allison. I'm almost finished with the bees, Virginia said proudly. I've only been doing it for 32 years. Allison opened her dictionary. Mrs. Jules' class, she suddenly remembered. She sighed with relief. Can you sigh with relief? <sighs> for the last six days, she'd been trying to remember where she came from. In her mind, she went through everybody in her former class. She didn't want to forget again. As she thought about each person, tears filled her eyes. She missed them very much even Jason. They were all so wonderful in their own special ways. When the two-minute break came, she talked to Mark again. He was the only person in class who still, still seemed to have a brain. How did we get here, she asked. Maybe we're dead, said Mark. Uh, maybe we died and went to... This isn't heaven, said Allison. That wasn't what I was going to say, said Mark. Allison felt a chill run up her spine. She looked at Miss Zarvis. Miss Zarvis smiled back at her. But she seemed so nice, said Allison. Could someone as nice as her really be the devil? I don't know, said Mark. She always gives us good grades. What would happen if we didn't do our work, asked Allison. We have to do our work, said Mark. Why, asked Allison. What's Miss Sarvis going to do, keep us after school? I don't know, said Mark. Teachers can always find new ways to punish you. They're experts at it. Do you think so? I hope not. Your two minutes are up, boys and girls, announced Miss Sarvis. Everyone back to work. Allison returned to her seats. She tried to figure it all out, but she had so much busy work to do, she didn't have time to think. That's her plan, Allison suddenly realized. She shivered as it came together for her. Miss Zarvez assigns us lots of busy work so we don't have time to think. She makes us memorize ridiculous things so we don't think about the important things. And then she gives us good grades to keep us happy. Miss Zarvez walked around the room. Very good, Virginia. You're doing so well. Excellent, Ray. Good job, Nick. She stopped when she got to Allison. Allison, why aren't you working? Allison looked at her. She knew Mark was right. Teachers are experts at finding ways to punish you. And if Miss Zarvez was <clears throat> the devil, she, who, knew, who knew what might be up her sleeve? Still, Allison had to take a chance. She, if she wanted to get back to Mrs. Jules' class, she had to act as if she were in Mrs. Jules' class. She took off her sock, her shoes and socks, sat on the floor, and sucked her toes. Allison, what are you doing? asked Miss Zarvez. Allison took her toe out of her mouth. Get off my case, buzzard face, she said. Miss Zarvez was furious. Return to your desk, young lady, she ordered. Allison returned to her desk, but instead of sitting at it, she climbed on top of it and sang a song. I got one sock, looking for the other. One sock, looking for its brother. When I find that sock, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put it on my foot and I'll stick it in my shoe. Mark Miller smiled at her and silently clapped his hands. Everyone else looked at her like she was crazy. Your socks are on the floor next to your, to next to your shoes, Miss Sarvis said coldly. I'll give you 10 seconds to put them on your feet. 10, 9, 8, 7, Allison climbed down from her desk. She picked up her socks and put them on her ears. How's this, she asked. Six, five, four. Albert Einstein didn't wear socks. Why should I? Three, two. Allison closed her eyes. One. She felt something slam down on her foot. Something else jammed, jammed her into, the, into her stomach. Ugh! She grunted as she fell and rolled down three steps. Are you all right, asked Dee Dee. Huh, said Allison. 
She went on the stairs. She was on the stairs somewhere between the 18th and the 20th story. Sorry, said Ron. I didn't see you. Dee Dee and I were racing up the stairs, and then you suddenly appeared. You knocked off her shoes and socks, exclaimed Dee Dee. Oh, I ripped your windbreaker, too, said Ron. I'm sorry. That's okay, said Allison. She picked up her shoes and socks. Race you up the stairs. All three ran up to Mrs. Jewell's room. When they got there, they were so pooped, they sat with their heads flat on their desks and their tongues hanging out. Hi, Allison, said Rondi. Allison raised her head. Hi, Rondi, she said happily. What did I miss while I was absent? When were you absent, asked Rondi. Hey, how come you're not wearing your shoes and socks? Allison hung her socks from her ears. What do you think, she asked. It's a new look. Rondi laughed. Allison, said Mrs. Jules, you seem to have a bad case of the sillies this morning. Allison giggled. Jason entered the room carrying a glass bowl with a goldfish swimming inside. Look what I brought, he said. What's the name of your goldfish, asked Mrs. Jules. Shark, said Jason. Everyone laughed. It makes him feel important, Jason explained. Where should I put him? How about on top of the coat closet, suggested Mrs. Jules. Jason had to stand on a chair on his tiptoes. He held the ball at the very bottom as he tried to nudge it over to the edge of the closet. Allison turned around to watch. She didn't want to miss this.